Good morning, friends. Well, I decided to start my video today sitting here on the couch to tell you that I can't sit on the couch today. Not every day is sitting on the couch philosophizing. We had a pretty good rain last night, and uh, it turns out that I have a leaky skylight. And that's what I have to address today. I'm going to go and put some sealer up on a particular place on the roof. So that's what's on my mind today. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Well, I'm going to go upstairs and take a look at what's going on with the skylight. My palm isn't going to make it. I had high hopes that after we put the chemical up there that that one would survive. But it's not going to, so it's time to have that taken down. It's kind of sad. Uh, I got my little cat's paw on the mic there. I hope that it's not whistling in the wind for you. This is the skylight. This part here is just the glass top over that. So probably it's this right here. You can see there's dirt in there from the water getting in there. So I'm gonna have to reseal all along there and uh, That'll be easy. This is uh, all of the same kind of stuff that I'm going to mix up today. It's very windy today. Hazy. Let's see if we got any avocados over here. And this, this is an avocado tree. I'm going to look at the tree and walk off the roof. Yeah, good idea, Jer. Uh, oh, yeah, right there. Oh, that's a pretty big one. Uh, is, yeah, right. Is that it? That big one out there, that's also an avocado tree. And here's another dead palm. This big fan palm, it too has been attacked and killed by that parasitic larva that's killing palm trees around here. Well, let's see if we can mix up some sealer. Another bathroom. I don't know if I ever showed anybody this bathroom before. This is a Talavera sink. And uh, I and Jesus uh, built this bathroom from start to finish. Shower. Hello, Jerry. <laughs> well, there's another bathroom and another Talavera sink. Jesus and I built this one too. where the maid does the ironing. And that's where Jerry sits on the couch and talks to you. But now we're going to go in the workshop. In here in the TV room, oh, 
See the stool? See the green wall? That's where I did my green screen shot. Um, in here, oh, pay no attention to the Doritos. This is the TV room or the Coke. Oh, well, actually, it's not Coke. It's Red Cola. You know, let me tell you about Red Cola. I'll sit down here and tell you about Red Cola. First of all, this is not a product endorsement. Well, I guess it is, but I'm not getting paid for it. People are always asking me uh, when I'm in the United States in my RV, what do you miss about being in Mexico? And my um, answer, tongue in cheek, as I usually am, but not entirely untrue, is I have two things I miss from Mexico when I'm in the United States. And one of them is two ply toilet paper because we live in our RV and one ply toilet paper is the standard. And the other thing is Mexican Coca Cola. Um, Coke in the United States is made with corn syrup and Coca Cola in Mexico is made with uh, sugar. So uh, it tastes very different. I have now started drinking red cola. Red cola. And the reason is because I like it better. Uh, I've been drinking it that way for several months and uh, I recently was in the store and I thought, well I'm going to buy a bottle of Coca-Cola Coca -Cola Coke. And so I did my own little taste test and I don't know if my taste has changed or what, but I now prefer red cola. Anyway, as I said, this is not a paid product endorsement. I'm just giving you my opinion. Uh, where were we? Oh, the leaks. See the buckets on the floor? Well, there's a skylight up here. And I'm getting some drips in the corners of the skylight, which means uh, there's a piece of glass on top of it besides that opaque uh, fiberglass, plasticky thing there. It was dripping out of two different corners. So, I have to address that. Um, well, let me tell you about a couple more things while I'm here. Uh, please notice, for those of you who always comment about the lampshade, it's straight. <laughs> This is a Murphy bed, and I built it uh, from scratch with raw lumber. All of the things in the middle are just uh, fake doors and drawers. Uh, there's a queen size bed in there. These are real drawers. And um, what else? Oh, the other day I was talking about stained glass that I've done. Here's another one that I've done. I did it years ago when Lynn and I were doing stained glass. And um, I've never been a good enough artist to do the beauty of Mount Olympus where, where all of the Greek gods live, like Zeus and them guys. So all I could do was this. I called it Leaving Olympus. And you have to imagine all of the beautiful things that are behind you as you look at it. Our little fireplace that we use in the wintertime when it gets cold. Oh, and that curtain hanging over there, we close off that big tall door. I call it my draft door. And watch the TV in the evenings. And um, that little fireplace keeps it nice and toasty in these two rooms. We also have a propane heater. So let's go into my workshop. I have found some... Sealiador, some uh, latex sealer, and uh, I bought a different brand one time, and my 
buddy Jesus said, I, I don't know about that. And he said, no, you should get this one. It's a uh, caster. Caster. So we used what I bought and we redid it in a few months. Uh, I don't know what the other brand was, but I can vouch for this one. So I've opened this up and you can see it's just white latex sealer in there. And you will mix that with marmalina. Marmalina is the sawdust from when they saw uh, big blocks of marble into uh, marble sheets for countertops or floor tile. Marmalina. We use that when we make up this thing that we seal the roof with. And the other thing is um, cement. Uh, I usually use uh, Cemento Blanco white cement, marmalina, and latex sealer. And we mix that up in um, more or less equal parts and then water it down so it flows. That's how we seal the roofs. Anyway, I have to go to the hardware store to get some marmalina and cemento blanco. So I'm back from the hardware store and this is marmalina. Well, let me open up the packages so you can see that. Okay, time to talk about one of my pet peeves in Mexico. It doesn't matter if you buy this kind of stuff or anything in a plastic bag. My coffee guy. If you get a uh, soda bottle of pop and they don't want to give you the bottle, they'll pour it in a plastic bag and they'll tie a knot in it. My pet peeve is that they always tie the knots so tight that you can't get them apart. I'm having to use some needle nose pliers to get that started. That is one of my pet peeves in Mexico. Is tying their plastic bags in a knot. <laughs> it's, you know, I thought I'd be having this open by the time I got done talking about it, but it's even worse than usual. You might think I'm faking this, but I'm not, and I'm just about to take a knife and rip the bag open. <laughs> Holy moly! Finally! Whew. And the other one. So, they didn't have Cemento Blanco, white cement. Um, at the hardware store I went to. So I just got regular cement. They call it Cemento Grace. Grease. It's gray. So this is just regular gray fine cement. And this, this is marmalina. It's very fine. Well, I was going to tell you how much I had to spend at the hardware store for the marmalina and the cemento. I bought two kilos of each. We bought it by the kilo. Now, if you were in the United States and you went to a hardware store or Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever, you would probably had to have bought a sack or a bag of 20 to 50 kilos but anyway, hardware stores here in Mexico still make sense because you can buy things by the kilo instead of by the bag. So they were out of uh, Cemento Blanco, the white cement, and I got the gray cement. The marmalina for two kilos was eight pesos, and the cement for two kilos, which is 4.4 pounds, was 16 pesos for a total of 24 pesos. There you go. And I uh, calculated that 24 pesos with today's exchange rate of 21 pesos to the dollar as a total cost at the hardware store of a dollar. That's one US dollar and 14 cents. So 
this ain't going to break the budget, this project. <laughs> so I'm going to mix this stuff up here, and uh, I've got a very fancy uh, Mexican uh, measuring cup here. And I'm just going to put in, to start with, one cup of each of these. A cup of marmalina, a cup of cement, and there's probably a professional formula for this. I like to mix up the dry stuff. I learned this making bread. I like to mix up the dry stuff first. And I'm just going to pour in some sealer. As I started to say, there's probably some professional formula for this. Um, but after working with Jesus for years, uh, I figured out that you kind of just go by your gut. And after you've done it a few times, you get the idea of what it ought to, what consistency it ought to be when you get done. So I'm going to mix that up and start putting in some water so that it will flow. Now, I use Cemento Blanco because uh, it's white, and white reflects the sunlight on the roof. Well, as I said, they didn't have any white cement, so this is going to turn out the color of concrete. And it's not going to look pretty up there, but it's going to do the job until I paint it white with some white paint, which I'm hesitant to do because then you've got a you've got a layer of paint in there that the, the next time you have to patch it, it won't um, seal good to like it would seal to the concrete. So uh, I'll probably just wait till I get some white cement. And, to redo this. But I think we're close to the rainy season starting here. And uh, I don't want to listen to the buckets drip while I'm watching TV. I'll seal that up later in case I need to make some more, but I think I'm okay there. I'm just going to take an old paintbrush to apply it. with the paintbrush to make sure it's flexible enough, and it is. Um, let's go back on the roof. So I washed the bucket out in the yard in the grass because um, you don't want uh, concrete in your drain. I poured the extra um, that I had left over in this plastic bag and I'm going to twist it up to kind of keep the air from getting to it. It won't dry as fast or cure as fast as up on the roof in the wind and I might need to put uh, a little extra in that one little corner to make it drain properly and please notice that I twisted that up and I did not tie it in a hard knot and then probably wait till tomorrow but uh, go back and put that um, uh, plate glass back up on top of it and that project will be done just another part of being retired in Mexico. Oh, I wanted to tell you one more thing. For those of you who know what I'm doing and may have done it yourself in the past, anytime that you put new concrete on top of old concrete, which is essentially what I was doing, you should wet the old concrete first. And I didn't do that because I didn't take any extra water up there with me. And it's such a small area that um, it'll probably be okay. But 
really, if you're doing a large area and you're putting new concrete onto old concrete, wet the old concrete first. I didn't do that. And for those of you who are maestros, please don't point it out. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.